think we need to have some, some bold, creative conversations about what we can do to restructure our system so that it works for everyone. And uh, this conversation around single pair, it's one we've had before, um, but I think it's a way that, uh, that we can create both universal and comprehensive care and actually get at that out of control cost problem um, that we continue to struggle with. All righty, uh, welcome back in. That is Aaron Regenberg who was here last night? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. What's today? Friday. 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 Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> welcome back in. We tape our Friday shows on Thursday, so if anything's going nuts, we try to catch up on Monday because Monday is just going to be what? Super Bowl analysis. Ah. Um, you think we'll have a, a sixth Super Bowl championship in the region? I think it's going to be a good game. I think, uh, don't underestimate what, the you Eagles. you become a politician? I'm picking the Eagles. You are? Yeah. <laughs> I saw this on a card today. Patriots uh, escaped the last few they games. Hate they hate us because they ain't us. <laughs> it's true. I'm a Giant fan, and I do hate you because I ain't you. Uh, Eagles, huh? Yeah. You know what? It might be time. Uh, quickly, Aaron Regenberg came here to talk about single-payer health insurance, and he wants a 10% a payroll tax. When I first heard it, I said, you got to be kidding me. I did some calculations. and I said, oh, my God, that's going to double my premium cost, even if, you will, if even it substitutes for my premium cost. He, he later came here and said, no, no, no. Uh, what we're talking about here is splitting, splitting the 10% responsibility between, pay, between payers and payees, meaning the companies and but it, what he's really trying to do is disrupt, a la Bernie Sanders, like on, on steroids, the entire culture in this state where businesses provide health insurance. What do you think? Well, this is, first of all, just part of a progressive onslaught on the business community on families. Uh, we've got single-payer health care, minimum wage, and just this week, a, a new carbon tax they proposed. So, so you keep adding on all these costs. Our center did an analysis. I, I, we'd have them calculate the effect of the 10% tax. But, it, but we did do now $5.4 billion in additional costs heaped on businesses, ratepayers, taxpayers, and households. $5.4 billion to put in this progressive fantasy. You just can't upend this. And the, prog the progressive fantasy includes what? Includes equal everything for everybody. No, <laughs> but every, everybody needs to have the same exact bad health care. Everybody needs to have the same, you know, get paid the same wage, whether they earn it or not. Everybody needs to pay high taxes to make sure we have uh, green energy, even though traditional energy is, is less expensive and almost as efficient. You know, this social equity driven agenda is, is I'm going to say, is communism in disguise. And I think that's already been proven to be a failure, but yet we have, we have an avid group of advocates in the state who are pushing for this social equity baloney. And the cost to taxpayers and businesses especially is, is out of this world. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how this progressive movement, both nationally and locally, uh, uh, moves along. Nobody is speaking that aggressively to them other than you and your organization. The politics of the Democratic Party are fascinating. The Speaker of the Fair. House is paralyzed by, by this. Less so in the Senate, but it's coming. Um, so it, it will be, it, it'll be great. To, it, look, we're going to have some good debates. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have them and you on every issue over the course of this legislative session banging away on it. Because there aren't a lot of people like you banging away on what's going on. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get others to bang away, if I could make two points. First of all, the Democratic Party is clearly split. I mean, in their progressive values pledge, they said you must not vote for the Speaker or for the Senate President Ruggiero. There's open warfare in the Democrat Party. I don't believe Bernie Sanders be should, be should have been in the National Democrat Party. He was a socialist. He's, he was an independent before he ran for president. And I don't think Regenberg and his crew should be in Rhode Island's Democrat Party. Form your own party. Quit hijacking this established party, which is what they're doing. As far as others speaking out, I've been getting calls from dozens, dozens of business owners, business leaders of associations. And we are now trying to come together to, to create a, a voice to fight back. You know, this progressive group is funded by out-of-state special interests. You've got Planned Parenthood, SEIU, you've got uh, Michael Bloomberg, George Soros. All this money is flowing into them from out-of-state. And we don't have any, any effective, coordinated way to fight back in this state. 
So I'm doing my best to try to try to add some coordination, and we'll see what we come up with in the coming months. So maybe we can talk about that too. But the business community needs to band, band together because this progressive agenda will kill businesses in this. Well, state. the messages are, are interesting because on an individual basis, uh, a lot of people will see some of the things they're fighting for and say, "Okay, well, all right, well, okay, well, all right," and there's. There's not a lot of totaling up of the bill. That's right. Um, okay. All right. You go down the list. And read, uh, read Animal Farm again. Yeah. It all sounds nice, but it, can't, it doesn't work. It doesn't, can't work. It doesn't work because... Because we, it costs too much, and the corruption and the hierarchies are still there, and uh, those in power want, will do anything to keep power. Read an, If you haven't read Animal Farm yet, reread it. So... We'll come back and if actually you give you some specifics, including this minimum wage conversation, and, and you've got some graphs that you want to show yep. us in terms of where Rhode Island is in terms of our, our earning capacity. Stay with us. If you work hard, if you believe in yourself, if you believe in America, then you can dream anything. You can be anything. And together, we can achieve absolutely anything. Yeah, one of the uh, more common ground themes I think the president had to offer. You think that's important to your conversation? Yeah. So, so this week the the progressives came out with their fifteen dollar minimum wage plan, and, and here what, in the state, here in this state, and what the research shows from other states, especially the Seattle study, is that while they are saying they want to help low income wage earners that the, the study is clear, like we've always said would happen, that that population will actually bring home less pay because their jobs will be reduced or their hours will be reduced that will offset more than offset any gains full time I haven't people seen, make. I haven't seen the new proposal. The last proposal was like a dollar an hour a year until you get to 15. Is, it, is that what they're looking it, for now? It, it's graduated over a few years, uh, yes but it's still going faster than the market would allow. And that has a disproportionate impact on teens. So to the president's point, you know, teens want to work too. Uh, but but we're, we're suppressing job growth in this state. And I think we have a chart that shows that since the recession, for all the happy talk we hear from our political leaders, since the recession, there's Rhode Island, second from the bottom in red. You have to have a big screen to see a lot of this. But yep. if, you go down the to the bo if you go down to the bottom right, you'll see a Rhode yep. Island in a different color. We are the second worst in the nation when it comes to recovering jobs from where we were before the recession. So we've only recovered 97% of our jobs since and, and only one other state is worse than that. Most states have, have surpassed their job levels. Texas being near 118 yep. percent, Utah, yep. uh, Colorado, Massachusetts is at 107 yep. percent, where's Connecticut, 103 percent. So all the jobs plus a few. We're all, we're all the jobs minus a few. Right. We haven't got it back. And teens are disproportionately impacted. So we're actually proposing a new concept. I'm going to see if we can get some legislative support to have a training wage in Rhode Island. If you're under 16, you don't have to get paid the minimum wage if you're a part-time, seasonal, and temporary or temporary employee. We need to, we need experienced. You know, we talk about workforce development. Is there a minimum training wage you want, or just anything that the market wants to spend? Well, right now we actually do have something for 14 and 15 year olds that's still 90 percent of the minimum wage. That's too high. So we're saying let's expand that to 16. I don't know what the number is, but let's make it something lower, like 75 or 60 percent or something like that of the mi minimum wage. So we can get more people working. We can get experience to our youth. It's critical they get work experience plus a little extra spending money. And let's do it in a way that doesn't take away the job of any full-time you know, hourly wage earner either. There's ways to do that, and I think... You want to you want to do that building off the current minimum wage? In other words, you don't want to give them a pay cut, necessarily the teens, but, but cap them at a certain level, which ends up being 80 or 90 percent of the growth of minimum wage, or do you want to reduce their minimum wage right now? We want to allow manufacturers to hire temporary 16 and under at workers... At eight bucks an hour if they want to. At something like that. Yes, that's something like that. Hmm. As long as it doesn't displace a full-time... And what will uh, that do to the worker. overall market conditions? Well, that will do two things. It'll increase uh, the number of jobs that, that, will, that manufacturers and employers will have in this state. It'll give those employers a less expensive way to hire seasonal help. And it will also put more teenagers, give more teenagers vital work experience. Is this happening anywhere? 
Yes, a lot of states have training wages. And a lot of states are now like, like I have this one, Washington has the state of Washington where the minimum, see, because when you have a really high minimum wage, it discourages hiring inexperienced sure. What's teams, the minimum wage right? of the states that, uh, is it a high minimum wage in the states that have training wages? Well, there's a correlation between high minimum wage and low and high teen unemployment. So we're saying to offset the high minimum wage that they're proposing and that we are actually already have in this state, let's do something to help spur teen employment. Are you willing to trade this against a, an eventual fifteen dollar no. minimum wage? No, no. But we all right now we already have a high minimum wage. We're only one of thirty states or so that has a minimum wage above the federal level, uh, state minimum wage above the federal wage, and and it's well, already we've been chasing hurting Massachusetts jobless. for quite some time. We're we're below them, and and yeah, you know, I just would like to see uh, Lou Raptakis's idea just be put in there, index it. Fix it, index it, and let's stop talking about it. Agreed. I, I would agree with that. I think we should index it based on not where we are. Based In other words, fix if, it first. If the CPI goes up a little bit, minimum wage goes up a little bit. You know, if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's as simple as that. Uh, the concept I could agree with. All right, but you're really, really you're really ready to fire up against these progressives. Huh? Well, our, listen, these employers tell me our state's at a tipping point. You keep you raise my cost to hire employees, you raise my energy costs, you raise my insurance costs anymore. We can't make it. Well, we'll see what the 2018 elections are going to be about, not just on a federal level, but here. They're going to be crucial because yes. this thing could go like this. Boom. We're one election away from having a, you know, progressive lieutenant governor and potentially progressive control of the House of Representatives. And that, that means a lot more taxes and a lot fewer businesses. And a lot more visits from Stenhouse fighting, <laughs> fighting the fight. Philly, huh? Just a prediction. Just a, just a prediction. Final word when we come back. <laughs> and so I, I saw this lady was parked in a parking lot. And I said, can I have one of those? And she said, yeah, I got one. I said, well, I took a picture of it. And she said, you can have one. Now, you know, I'm a giant fan, and I have to actually come to my soulful truth and say, maybe that is the truth. But good luck, Patriots Nation. I know you're very nonchalant, like been there, done that. We'll talk about it Monday. Gresh will be here to evaluate the entire effort. Get some sleep. Bye. <laughs>